Hi friends, today we're diving back into Xenon from a more creative perspective. After reading several of your comments from my Xenon video, which I love to do because I think that spurs creativity and ideas from my end in terms of what else can I film? Therefore, I wanted to come back on here and do some swapping. If you don't know, I have, I believe so, all of Natasha's midis, which means I have several of the midi pan sizes where a lot of the shades that people kept suggesting over and over are existing in Natasha's portfolio. For instance, people say, well, I wish Xena had a taupe or an icy blue or pink, a this, a that. That already exists in Natasha's collection. I'm not sure if you realize that. Also, people's critique about it being too gray or one dimensional, it's a grayscale palette. What do you think? And how the looks all turn out the same? If you keep using the same shadow over and over again, if you mix similar shades, they will all look similar. And I found from filming my own video that you have to hold yourself back. You can't go cocktailing your ass off in combining the same teal and the gray because yeah, it's gonna all look the same in the end. You might have to use one or two shades. It's like how one of our viewers, Catherine, hi, she had explained impeccably what I feel Xenon is. And if you see a pencil sketch, right? These beautiful sketches created by one pencil, but the gradients and the differences in shading, the nuances that occur with one tool, one tool on paper, but it's still being multi-dimensional. It's still jumping from the paper. It is still dynamic. And that's what I feel about Xenon, right? Like, Natasha gave us Yucca, all right? That was our warm palette for the year. Then we had I Need a Nude. That was like the topes and the middle of the road shades, however you want to categorize it. And now we have the full gray scale palette, which does not exist in her collection. So let me cover a few of the critiques in terms of shades that people wished were included in Xenon, right? People had said they wish Natasha included a a matte black where well there is a matte black in mini xenon right the problem is those pans are too small i don't think you can actually remove those pans from the palette i'm not entirely sure you can let me know about it but that's because my dream has the blackest black matte it's right here you you want to do want to do a switch okay we got to get the pin though do I have something like that on my desk? I sure don't. Okay. I'm wearing the gray today in honor of Xenon. You know what? I need to get those spatulas with the magnetic circle on them. I think Artist Kit Company has. All right, let's take out Sposh. Sposh is your cream to powder, but it's more charcoal, right? Okay. Let's take out Black is Black, and I'll put Black is Black in Xenon. There you go. Black is black is there. All right, what else? Someone has suggested neons. Now, interestingly enough, I feel deep in my heart. Natasha has midi neon planned for 2024. Whether it's a midi or mini, okay? It's something she would do. We saw it in pastel. She gave us all pastels, all right? Why wouldn't she do neon? Maybe this is considered neon for her. Circo Loco could be a neon moment as well. You know, we don't, it would be hard to tell, but maybe she already had that in mind and why she didn't include the neon shades in Xenon, which if you're fully committing to the snowy night landscape inspo, I wouldn't put neons in there. I, I wouldn't because it just doesn't align with the, again, grayscale, dirty snow type of vision that I feel Xenon is giving. What we could do, we could take out either Blizzard or Flurry, right? Because I had said that was like my gripe with the palette in that I felt those two were fairly similar. You will have to use them separately, right? So let's take Oops, that was stellar. I don't want to take stellar out. Let's take blizzard out and put in maybe a taupe. We got a bunch of taupes <laughs> from Natasha, all right? That's what I'm like, you want a taupe in here? We got so many taupes. We got retro glam. We got I need a nude. We have glam, 
Hello? Okay. Glam we could do. I actually thought the tote from I Need a Nude would be more suitable for Xenon because it's cooler, whereas the taupe found in Glam leans a little more beigey brown, right? That's, that's what I was getting at. And for my skin tone, since this is my palette, I thought Tender was quite lovely on me as a sculpty shade, right? So let me go into Tender where Blizzard was. And now we have a taupe in the Xenon. It doesn't have the same impact. It doesn't have the same impact, but you know what, it's fine. If we wanted to maintain impact, hold on, we could do what's found in Zendo. Now, not icy blue, this is more of a teal. You know what I mean? Equilibrium flow, all right. Equilibrium flow. Equilibrium, I think, okay. All right, I'm taking out the taupe. I don't like the taupe in here, sorry. Don't like the taupe in here. If you really want a taupe, you're just gonna have to put it in there yourself. Cause I don't like it in here. It disrupts the, the flow, you know what I'm saying? We could try equilibrium. So let's do that, being very careful. Oh gosh, I need to get one of those magnetic spatulas, 100%. So I'm going in with equilibrium. I think it's too teal. That's the equilibrium. I think it's too teal. I don't know if I like that. It's better than the taupe. It's better than tender, I gotta say. Let's go in with feather. Feather is found in pastel, either feather or airy. Airy could be something. It could be something. I, okay, I like Contrail, which is the trail that jets leave behind, that cloud trail or an airplane. I think having a matte white is important in this type of a palette. Don't wanna take that out. I can take out Flurry. Flurry is our light gray matte, kind of, right? Which, you know, I don't personally need for my own skin tone and eye looks from Xenon. So let's take that one out. Let's take that one out. Although I am looking at Bubble. I think Bubble better because it's cooler in tone. Bubble is the cream to powder, right? And I think that'll be interesting. Or you know what, Airy? I, I gotta do Airy, never mind. Let me do Airy or Zest. Zest would be interesting. All right, I put Airy. What do we think? If it was a little more cooler toned, a little more cooler toned, I think it's a little, it's still, crazy even in here it feels warm oh when i see it though it is not too bad actually it's not too bad the only other color i would add well mm, breath from zendo would be interesting but i think zest zest from pastel i don't know someone had said pink i think snowbow I finally pronounced it correctly. Snowbow is the pink with the icy blue reflex. Gorgeous, by the way. How about Retro Glam? Does Retro Glam have like a sage green moment that will be appropriate to be in something like Xenon? Let me see. I mean, at Jazzy, obviously, that's your kind of pewter type of a moment in the metallic formula. Oscar has a little more like a champagne tinge to it. Evergreen, Evergreen is sagey and Marlin is minty. This could probably, but if I would include a green in Xenon, it would have to be more gray green, which Marlin is. That, that, that makes sense. Palladian too. Palladian, I think, could be included in Xenon. That would be an appropriate shade. I like Retro Glam. It's been a while since I hopped into this. This was a, a weird one, I think, with a lot of people also. They didn't, they didn't really know what to do with it. They felt a lot of the looks were the same as well, but, or not. I think we're gonna stop here. This is all I have for now. I would love to know your suggestions down below because I would like to roll into the demo because guess what? You, we gotta cook dinner. Butternut squash. So let's come in a little closer and start this demonstration. Using the Shantikai primer, the next generation eye base in light. 
purposefully because many of you had said yes you see some of these shades come through as more bluish navy because of the peachy undertone of my Lancome concealer that I applied on my eyes for my original Xenon video and I think this lighter shade from the Chantecai would bring out more of the charcoal -y quality so something to consider perhaps if you are my skin tone and you want to alter kind of or kind of enhance that gray charcoal undertone for many of these shades you probably have to apply something lighter like i am now i'm gonna whip that across also if you have max paint pot i think that would be a great lay down primer for xenon yeah because we just have to make this a little lighter now it looks crazy i understand right now because it's like oh my god but once we get these shades on i think we'll be okay let's start off with what was airy in pastel and set off the inner arc with that light blue type of a hue right i'll go in with this first where's my mirror taking my refer 02 max because I think a packer brush would be appropriate for this type. I'm gonna place it here, tap along the inner arc, and then I'll use Snurt, which is snow and dirt combined. I finally got that, thank you, into the crease. And I think pulling from Airy would be a nice transition, don't you think? From this pastel shade into more of the gray, and I'll be careful here with the placement. I'll start tighter into the crease and then I'll take it out from there. I'm purposely using a small brush to, again, keep this application tighter to the crease and then I'll fluff it out eventually. And I'm pulling it over airy so that there is a smoother gradient, yeah. And then I'll whisk it out gently. That's nice. Okay, what shall we do for the outer corner though? You know, I'm not gonna think of anything out of corner. I wanna go in with Gru. Gru is our beautiful gray, silvery metallic here. And I'll apply that with a finger on the majority of the lid, right? Lightly overlapping airy. And I'll also take it up higher. This is what I kinda did in my first demo, in my original video where I stuck to snurt and grew, so it could be a an all true gray eye. But now since we added air, we added like that pop of blue, that icy blue. Tapping here, there we go, all over the lid. I like what's happening. Now I'll go in with Night Sky. Night Sky is our black metallic shade from Xenon. And I'll choose, let me see here. I think I'll go in with my Jumbo Blender from Sonia. And I'll take quite a bit of that metallic and tap in, inwards, as I don't want this shade to go way past the lash line just yet. I want the majority of the color to stay on the outer lid. And then I'll use the tip of the brush to gently blend it out from there and naturally some will go in snurt right that's going to happen since I primarily kept that color tight to my crease fold but now to create a more prominent gradient I'll go back in with snurt with a much fluffier brush and start to take the blend higher right so that the majority of night sky is lower here on the lid and then it goes higher towards the brow and a little bit of contrail i think that is our white matte and i'm tapping that here on the brow bone i think that's a nice contrast to what's happening you know what i'm saying night sky here on the outer lower lash line and rhyme here which will not have that same reflectivity as stellar or neve but i think just the brightening quality of the metallic itself Oh gosh, will be rather lovely here on the inner corner because that's going to brighten that portion of the eye. And I'm thinking of 
applying stellar over airy this shade here which is which has a translucent base therefore the baby blue will still show through and tapping that over there we go oh that's pretty i like that okay last eye i know we only have two looks i gotta cook the squash okay i'm trying to do something different from what we had in our first video and i could go in with that dark teal that we had from zendo but i think that's going to look similar to ebb right ebb was our midnight blue from xenon right that has a little more of like that blue gray in there you know what i'm gonna go back in with ebb but create a halo eye because the last time i used ebb it was all over the lid now i'll start placing it here on the outer part of my lid as well as inner and then apply i think neve on the center i think they'll be lovely again going in with Sonia's jumbo blender tapping and flicking as I want to keep the color pretty tight for now Eb is beautiful I love Eb I love how it shows up more like navy it's so pretty smaller brush for the inner part of the lid because jumbo blender is far too large for this task it will overwhelm the inner part of my eye and I think it will just look too kind of shaded in this area. Once we have both colors on, I'll start to whisk out ebb from beyond the lash line and gently pull it through the crease, right? Because we are placing another shade on the center. Yeah, we're just shaping it here so it can uh, appear more what is the words can't i can't find the words neve finger just tapping center and bringing it up pretty high i want it as if you know the snow is falling from the midnight sky ain't that nice and because we have the black is black here that's your opportunity right if you want it people are like i wanted the black i'm like the black already exists okay you just gotta pull it out if you have my dream if you don't have my dream maybe black liner hmm i'll take black is black and start tapping on the base of my lash line in case you wanted a little more depth right you could gently wing it out create a little more intensity there depending on how you want it to look. I like to do a little wingy wing, not crazy, but just to add a little more uh, intensity to the overall look. I don't want to overwhelm the ebb shade. I want that to still be the dominant color here on the outer part of my lid. I just want to invite a little more of that black there. Yes. And of course, we'll take ebb here on the lower outer part of our lash line and i have to make sure i connect the top yeah we gotta make sure this is connected take it all away mm-hmm mm -hmm. okay dokie in a corner in a corner time let me see snowbow we gotta do snowbow snowbow just surprised me i was not ready for how beautiful this shade is you you can't it's so lovely because of the icy blue reflect hard to pick up in camera in, in fact it's impossible to if you apply this shade and you shine your phone light on your lid you will see what i'm talking about and now for the lower inner lash line hey let me see i actually want to go in with Gru. i think Gru would be nice to have that steely silver gray. Where is my pencil brush? Here on the inner part is a little dark, but I think it'll be quite fine. And then I'll pull it gently over Ebb. Yes, I'm going over the blackest black with Neve a little bit more because I want that part of the the color to shine all right both eyes are done let's apply some lashes and i'll be right back here are the looks created by our makeshift xenon 
all in all, they still appear similar to the looks that I did, despite the inclusion of some of these suggestions, and it's because I use similar like shades. I mean, you can see that there obviously is the influence of Airy with that blue, and for those who suggested neon colors to be included, or, or whatever different colors to be included, it will serve as that pop, whether you place it on the lid or inner corner or inner arc. If you had wanted to use a taupe, I think instead of it looking gray, it will just appear more taupey smoky. So you either have gray smoky or taupey smoky, but they're both going to be smoky. And I like the fact that you still have the navy tones or primarily what's found in Ebb, which originally was included in the palette. And if you pair it with Rhyme or Neve, Stellar, I think it's just lovely. Definitely giving you Snow Princess vibes. For sure. Again, I don't mind. There's no super black matte again because we already have black is black. If I wanted more of like that black influence, I wouldn't even reach for mini xenon. I would just block out the outer lid or line with a black pencil and use Sposh or even Night Sky to blend it further. That's what I would do. I don't think a, a black matte is necessarily, in my opinion, because again, it's already existing in the collection. Sposh is fantastic just for like that charcoal shading through the crease and you could keep that as is. In fact, Sposh by itself is gorgeous. You know what? I want to take this off and experiment. So hold on tight because we still got to cook the butternut squash. I'm going to take this off, try the just most low-key look we can possibly achieve from Xenon and I'll be right back. I slapped on some concealer quickly and let's go into Sposh because again, that's our charcoal moment and I'll use Sonia's Fusion Blender because I just want to create a light wash across the lid as well as the crease to see what will happen if we primarily just stuck to this color, right? If we didn't want to go nuts and combine a thousand shadows at once. Just the magic of what a charcoal can do all on its own, right? Just like that basic smoky okay. But also if you had smaller eyes, I think it would be lovely if you lined top and bottom lashes or rather uh, water lines with a charcoal pencil and then use Sposh to blend it out and kind of create that blur. It will be so pretty. That's pretty. See, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And I'll just lightly go in with Stellar on the inner corner because why not? I think it important to finish off the look with a highlighter, but you could also go with Contrail if you wanted. If you wanted something more blocked out and combine the two, why not? That's eye number one. And if, listen, if I were going to simplify this even further gift just on the lid like this and not apply anything else tapping it all over i want to get it mostly on the lid and i get if you're like okay see this could have been a moment for a taupe 100 percent so grab a taupe from glam my dream i need a nude you know what i mean like this is i need a nude eye right now because this shade is similar to i feel what what exists in that palette. Applying what I think is flurry, either flurry or blizzard. I'm taking the more beige leaning matte. I think it was flurry. Yeah, just do the crease to, just to smooth the edges of skift and then cleaning up there. Mm, supersonic on the inner corner. No, I think that's too silvery. I'll go in with rhyme. I think rhyme is just so pretty. This white metallic brightening on the inner corner like snow. What to apply in the lower lash line? Well, I could do the same color we applied here on the lid, but then I do want to take a little bit of night sky and brush the outer edges of the lid and not take it out in a wing. I want to create smoky brackets, if you will, just to add a little bit of intensity here. And then taking my shader and blending the edges. 
So it just becomes a little more hazy in the application. All right, lashes, and I'll be right back. And here is our second round, quick impromptu, experimenting with Sposh as it is, seeing what beautiful gray smoke it provides. And then just committing to skift on the lid, a little bit of night sky on the lash line for some smudge and zhuzh. And yes, I love Xenon. I do. I don't care if people think is all gray, is one dimensional, is whatever. I see Natasha's vision. I see it. And that means I need to get on board. I need to learn where she's coming from so I can fully appreciate what Natasha has created. Because if you don't understand Natasha's application technique or her approach to color science and whatnot, yes, you'll feel lost. You'll feel what's going on. I don't like it. And that's usually the initial response, right? When you are uncomfortable with something and you don't grasp what's in front of you, if you don't understand something, then it's usually like, I don't like it. And that's something I see as a coach, not even just in makeup, but just <laughs> in life in general. If we're uncomfortable with something, we don't like it or we don't want to adapt. We don't want to learn more about it and find out, okay, I might feel weird about this now, but what can I do to perhaps understand it? And even through that process, you come out the other end and you still don't get it and you're like, it's just not for me, which is fine as well. But to not give it a shot and to not approach this from Natasha's point of view, especially knowing how she applies makeup. Natasha demos on so many models for her palette. She has her own YouTube channel. You see what her style is and it is reflected in her palettes and why she chooses the colors and textures that she does. And having a color story that dedicates itself to black, white, and gray, I think is phenomenal with all shades in between, all textures in between. I think it is a grand finale for the year in Natasha Denona land, and I'm happy with it. Can't wait to use it some more, and I'll mix and match as I did in this video. I think that's the funnest part about it. That's the point why I have all these freaking Natasha Denona palettes and why she made the magnetic is that you could swap and customize the palette to what is going to make you happy. You want the taupes, if you want the pastels, you want the pinks or whatever you wish was in Xenon. Well, my goodness, the amount of midis Natasha has released since she started with Sunset a few years back has been immense. Possibilities are endless, fam. Get on it. Again, with that said, let me know what your favorite combinations will be down below for your own custom Xenon Mini. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial, Natasha Denona Palette Extravaganza, or we'll make our own Natasha Denona Palette mixing up all the midis. Let me know. Take care and I'll see you again soon.